Hey everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy. I'm so excited for today's video because my sunscreen testing video for 2023 is finally here. I usually put this out the first weekend of May because of course May is Skin Cancer Awareness Month and one of the main reasons that I wear sunscreen is because I don't want to get skin cancer. I'm a very, you know, pale person and sunshine can cause skin cancer. So I do like to wear sunscreen for that reason. I also love sunscreen for its anti-aging ability abilities and I didn't even start wearing it till I turned 50. Now I'm 60. Using sunscreen has made a huge difference in my skin. So no matter what age you are, I always encourage everyone to wear sunscreen every single day. I test mineral sunscreens because it's really hard to find a mineral sunscreen that looks good on your skin or that wears well under makeup or finding one that does both is like a needle in a haystack. I actually tested 30 sunscreens for this video. I'm not going to show you all 30 because my hard drive where I store all the clips ate all the sunscreen testing videos. So I had to retest all the sunscreens. So I've got 24 of them here for you today. I know that sounds like a lot to get into one video, but don't worry, 11 of them were terrible and couldn't be worn. So we'll, we'll just buzz through them really, really quickly. I have now tested over 200 sunscreens in the eight years that I've been doing these sunscreen testing videos. So if you don't see a sunscreen that you're looking for in this video, it's probably in one of my other videos, which if you just type in hot and flashy in the name of the sunscreen, the video should come up. I also have a blog post where I list every sunscreen that I've ever tried from best to worst. The reason I like mineral over chemical for me personally is because my skin is super sensitive and the chemical sunscreening ingredients irritate my skin. They make it burn around my eyes. You're going to see me applying a quarter teaspoon of each sunscreen for my face and my neck. That's because sunscreen is dose dependent. You need a quarter of a teaspoon to get the SPF number on the label. If you're applying a tiny pea size amount of sunscreen and making it go for your whole face, you're probably cutting an SPF of 30 down to an SPF of two or four. And I don't think that's why you're using sunscreen. You want the full SPF. Here's a little demo showing you the difference between applying the full amount of sunscreen that you're supposed to use and using just a tiny pea size amount of the same sunscreen. And as you can see, applying the tiny pea size amount, it doesn't leave a white cast. It looks very nice on the skin. And applying the full amount of sunscreen, it leaves a strong white cast. For the sunscreens that I find to be wearable on their own, I'll also test them under makeup. When I do the makeup testing, I use the same foundation for every single sunscreen. That's L'Oreal True Match. With my Holy Grail sunscreen, it wears for eight to 10 hours with just a little bit of wearing off like on my nose and chin. Otherwise, it looks great all day and it doesn't settle into my wrinkles. I've also got a new rating system for the sunscreens where they can get a possible five points out of five for sunscreen and then a possible five points out of five for how they wear under makeup. I'm not rating the sunscreens for how well they screen your skin from the sun. That's going to depend on how much of it you put on, how often you reapply it, and how the formulators made the sunscreen. What I'm reviewing them for here is how nice they look on your skin, whether you feel like a grease slick. So the first 11 sunscreens are sunscreens that I consider not wearable on their own, just as a sunscreen for me personally, because they either give me a white cast, a greasy feel, they have too much fragrance, they made my face itch, or they settled into my neck wrinkles, which is always a really good look or they just don't blend out. So the first sunscreen, and therefore the worst sunscreen in this year's testing, is Copper Tone Sport Mineral Face SPF 50. It's so oily and so greasy feeling and has such a strong white cast. It's settled in my neck wrinkles, zero out of five points. Second to the worst is Dermaca Sunscreen SPF 42. The tint is sort of greenish gray. It gathers up in your hair line and in your eyebrows. It has a super shiny finish. It makes you feel super greasy. It's settled in my neck wrinkles. I gave it a zero out of five points. All right, next up is Think Tinted SPF 30. This is super thick and greasy feeling. It doesn't really rub into your skin so much as it just smears around on top of your skin. It smells like pine sol and it made my skin so itchy. I couldn't wait to take this one off. Zero out of five points. 
Next up is the non-tinted version of one of my all-time favorite sunscreens, which has been reformulated. That is the MyShell SunShield Liquid SPF 50. They used to make this in tinted versions. They have now reformulated that and it's now an SPF 30. It leaves a strong white cast. It leaves behind a greasy, tacky feeling on the skin. So zero out of five. Next up is Coco Kine Daily SPF Facial Sunscreen SPF 32. This one feels like half dried out Elmer's glue going on your skin. It gathers up in your hair and your eyebrows, leaves a white cast, zero out of five points. Next up is Pacifica Glow Baby Super Lit SPF 30 Tinted Mineral Face Lotion. Spreading it leaves streaks all over your face. It dries really fast so that you can't keep working it. So forget about adding more sunscreen later in the day. It does gather up in your hair and your eyebrows. So I'm giving the Pacifica one point out of five just because it doesn't feel greasy. Up next is Make Prem UV Defense Me Calming Tone Up Sun Cream SPF 50. It leaves a strong white cast my face feels a little greasy like a standard sunscreen. The finish is glowy but not super shiny. It does gather up in your hair and your eyebrows and it settles into neck wrinkles. Zero out of five points. Next up is Dermatology Daydream SPF 40. It gathers in your hair and your eyebrows. It leaves a slight white cast, but your face feels really sticky and really greasy and it settles into neck wrinkles. Two out of five because you could technically wear it on your face, I guess. <laughs> but if you have a neck that has wrinkles, stay away from this one. Next is Dermalogica Pore Screen SPF 40. Leaves a slight white cast and a very shiny finish. Your face feels wet and greasy like somebody poured oil over it. It gave me polka dot pores, giving it a two out of five. All right, next is I'm From Rice SPF 50 PA++++. It goes on a little streaky, but you can eventually rub it in if you really, really work at it for a long, long time. It does leave a white cast, but it does gather up in your hair and eyebrows. It doesn't feel greasy at all. The finish isn't super shiny, but I'm giving it a three out of five. It wasn't an epic fail. For people who are paler than me, you might actually like this one. All right, the next sunscreen that was unwearable on its own is from Bellflower. It's called Carrot Mild Sunscreen. It's an SPF 50 plus PA plus 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 plus. It is a little chunky around the hairline and brows. It leaves a slight white cast. The finish isn't too shiny. It's got a soft luminous the settling in the neck wrinkle situation was over the top with this one, so I'm gonna give it a three out of five. Next up is Everyday by Unsun Mineral Tinted Face SPF 30. It doesn't leave a white cast, leaves a greenish and grayish cast, but it doesn't feel greasy and it rubs in really nicely. It has an overpowering pine sol fragrance. It did make my skin tingle and itch, and I had to take it off right away. I'm giving it a Two out of five. Next up is Native Mineral Face Lotion SPF 30. This is a white, thicker lotion sunscreen that looks streaky and patchy going on, and there are lots of white streaks all over your face. It feels greasy, but not wet or oily. It does go on white and leaves the tiniest white cast, and the finish is a soft glow. I rated this one a two out of five. All right, so that's it for the unwearable on its own category. Next category is good on its own, but not great under makeup. So if you're just looking for a sunscreen, if you're a man or a kid or a woman who doesn't wear makeup, any of these could probably work well for you. First up in this category is the new one from Eucerin. It's their Sensitive Mineral Face Tinted Sunscreen SPF 35. It's $14 for 1.7 ounces. It's fragrance, dye, paraben, paba, and phthalate free, and it's not water resistant. It's a tinted lotion. It feels like a lightweight oily lotion going on. It blends in easily. It does gather in your hair and your eyebrows a little bit, but the tint mainly hides that. The finish is very, very shiny though, and my face felt really oily and really greasy. The tint is slightly dark for me, and it's too shiny for me to wear it on its own, but for people with super dry skin, I think you might like this because drier people tend to like things that I find to be too shiny and too greasy feeling. Under makeup, this was actually pretty nice. The makeup didn't settle in my wrinkles, the shine did come through the foundation, so it makes your foundation look extra luminous, and you don't have to use as much foundation with this one because of the strong tint that you get. But it doesn't quite sit on the skin right, leaving tiny tinted dots on the surface. And it's settled in my neck wrinkles. 
It did shorten the wear time of the makeup though, where I was seeing a lot of it wearing off around my face after four hours. And then at eight hours, the makeup was very, very worn off. So I give this one a four out of five rating for sunscreen and a two out of five for how it wears under makeup. All right, next is Good Molecules Sheer Mineral Sunscreen. It's an SPF 30. It's $12 for 1.7 ounces. It's fragrance-free, non-nano, vegan, reef safe, and not water resistant. It's a white lotion sunscreen that feels like skincare. It's non-greasy. It spreads easily. It leaves a very minimal white cast. There's no smell. The finish is nice. It's mildly glowy, but not shiny. And my face didn't feel greasy or oily, but I did have some pilling on my eyelids and to the sides of my eyes, and it pills up a little bit in the eyebrows. Foundation went on over this one pretty nicely, except where all those balls and pills were around my eyes. It looked a little bit patchy on my forehead and on my cheeks wasn't wearing great after four hours and after eight hours it was very worn off much more than with my holy grail sunscreen and it also started feeling drying after about six and a half hours as a sunscreen that's wearable on its own i give it a four out of five as long as you wouldn't have that pilling around the eyes for how it wears under makeup i only give this one a two out of five all right next up is two sunscreens from the same company this is clear spf they sent me a tinted and a non-tinted. The non-tinted sunscreen I would put with the unwearable sunscreens because of the strong white cast, but you take the white one and you mix it with the tinted one and you can get whatever shade you want and it's actually a pretty decent sunscreen. So these are both an SPF 30. They both retail for $38 for 1.7 ounces. They are 20% zinc oxide. They're fragrance-free, cruelty-free, vegan, Hawaii reef compliant, but not water resistant. This is a lightweight lotion texture sunscreen that rubs in really easily and doesn't feel greasy or sticky. There's no problems around the hair. There's no white cast when you mix them together. The finish is lovely. It's a semi-matte, not shiny. It has the perfect dry down and feel. It doesn't feel tacky, doesn't feel greasy. It is pretty dang amazing. Let's try it with makeup. With makeup, it's not so great. The foundation does go over it pretty well, but not perfectly. And it does make it look a little dry and patchy and clingy. After four hours, the makeup was wearing pretty well, but it just didn't look great overall. It accentuated wrinkles and it looked a little dry all day. And at the eight hour mark, the makeup looked fine from a distance, but not 100% great up close. I think this one is great on its own if you mix the two to get the perfect shade for you, and it's just okay under makeup. So I gave it a five out of five for sunscreening and a three out of five for how it works under makeup. All right, next up is kind of a shocker for me. It is from My Shell. It's their Protect Replenishing Solar Defense SPF 30. This is $32.99 for 2.3 ounces. It has 13.5% zinc oxide. It's artificial fragrance-free, cruelty-free, vegan, but not water resistant. This is a thick white cream. It feels like glue going on. It's very sticky, but like a dry sticky, not a greasy sticky. It's got a very weird rub in, but once you work it in a little bit more, the white patches go away. Like when I first put this on, I was like, this is terrible. I'm going to hate it. And as I worked it in, I was like, wait, I kind of like it. And by the end, I was like, wait, I kind of love it. There were no problems around the hairline or eyebrows. There's virtually no white cast. There's no smell. It's not shiny, but it's not matte either. It didn't feel drying. Foundation goes on over it pretty well, except for areas where it looks a little clingy, like between my eyebrows. It makes the makeup look a little bit heavier than normal and does make it settle into wrinkles. After four hours, the makeup was hardly worn off on my nose and chin, but a little bit drier than normal. At the eight hour check-in, the makeup looked good from a distance, but it did look a little crusty and patchy between my eyebrows. So I gave it a five out of five for wearability as a sunscreen and a two out of five on your makeup. Next up is from Hue Guard. It's their Live Tinted 3-in-1 Mineral Sunscreen Moisturizer and Primer SPF 30. It's $32 for 1.7 ounces. It's 18.23% non-nano, 
zinc oxide. It's fragrance free, vegan, cruelty free, clean, and reef safe. It is an apricot colored tinted lotion sunscreen that feels like a lightweight moisturizer going on. It absorbs quickly and is easy to apply. It doesn't feel sticky or greasy. There's no clumping around the hairline or eyebrows. The tint hides any white cast and it's invisible on the skin. The finish is very shiny and the face does feel slightly tacky. Makeup goes on really nicely over this sunscreen. There's no balling or pilling and there was no settling into wrinkles. At four hours though, it wasn't wearing very well. It was worn off on my nose and chin. At eight hours, the makeup was mainly worn off everywhere. So I'm giving this one a five out of five for being able to wear it on its own as a sunscreen and three out of five under makeup. Next is Kosas Dream Beam Comfy Smooth Sunscreen SPF 40. Retails for $40 for 1.3 ounces. It's 21.7% zinc oxide. It's cruelty free and reef safe. It's a tinted lightweight lotion sunscreen. It goes on really, really nicely. It's good around the hair and eyebrows. It does have a really strong floral fragrance. It leaves no white cast. The finish is super shiny and my face felt really wet and oily during rub-in. Foundation goes on sheerer than normal with this one and the shine comes right through the foundation. There's a little balling and pilling here and there when you do put on foundation and it makes my skin look shiny, accentuated texture and it had settled into all my wrinkles. At the four hour check-in, makeup was more worn off than usual. At the eight hour check-in, makeup was worn off more than normal. I give this one a four out of five as a wear it on its own sunscreen and a two out of five under makeup. The next sunscreen is Stream to See Everyday Tinted Mineral Sunscreen. It's an SPF 45, retails for $28.95 for 2.5 ounces. It's 19% non-nano zinc oxide. It is fragrance-free, cruelty-free, vegan, reef safe, and 80 minutes water resistant. So you could wear this one to the beach. It's a very thick, tinted cream textured sunscreen, but it doesn't feel thick when you rub it in. It feels oddly thinner, but it does feel wet and a little greasy or oily. There were no problems in the hairline or with the eyebrows. There's no white cast, there's no smell. The finish is pretty shiny and my face felt pretty oily and wet. I think it's very wearable on its own if you love a radiant finish or if you have super dry skin. Foundation goes on over it really nicely and looks good. Good. The shine does come through the makeup, but if you like that radiant finish, then you will like this even with your makeup on under it. I ended up using a more matte setting powder on one side of my face to control the shine and a more luminous setting powder on my other side of the face just to see how it would look. It wasn't very worn off at all at four hours. At eight hours, the luminous powder side was a little bit more worn off than the matte powder side, but it didn't feel drying to wear all day. So for me, it's a four out of five as a wear it on its own sunscreen and a three out of five with makeup, but if you love that luminosity, could be a five out of five for you. All right, this is the last one in this category. This is HelioCare 360 Mineral Tolerance Fluid SPF 50 PA++++. It's 21.75 for 1.7 ounces. It's a nano titanium dioxide and nano zinc oxide sunscreen. It's fragrance-free, alcohol-free, vegan, water resistant, and it screens infrared A. It is a very runny, lightly tinted liquid. It feels wet and silicone-y and it rubs in very, very easily. It's really good around the hair and in your eyebrows. It leaves a minimal white cast. There's no smell. It leaves a nice, soft, glowy finish. Your face does feel a little bit wet and oily and silicone-y. I do think it is wearable on its own for paler people. Not necessarily for me though. The foundation goes on over it pretty well, but there was some balling and pilling and the white cast comes through makeup a little bit. The makeup wore well, but my skin looked more textured. Wrinkles were accentuated more than usual. It caused my mascara to smudge like crazy. And at the eight hour check-in from a distance, I thought it looked okay, not too worn off and it had settled into wrinkles and it looked really dry and crusty by the end of the day. So I'm giving this one a four out of five for its wearability on its own, but only a three out of five for how it does under makeup. All right, the next category is not wearable on its own, but good under makeup. The first one is the Murad Correct and Protect Serum SPF 45. This is a PA++++. It's $70 for one ounce. Ouch. 
but 16.7% zinc oxide. It's fragrance-free, cruelty-free, gluten-free, 40 minutes water resistant. Doesn't smell like anything. It does leave the slightest white cast. Your face will feel a little bit slippery and oily and silicone-y. It does have a shiny finish, but it's good in the hair and the eyebrows. And the makeup went on over it really well, and it makes the foundation go farther. So I used half as much foundation to get the same look as normal, and it looked really, really natural. The shine from the sunscreen does come through through the foundation. At the four hour check-in, it still looked really good overall. It was a little worn off on my nose, but it had no settling into wrinkles and it wasn't getting shiny and it was really comfortable to wear. At the eight hour check-in, the makeup still looked really good overall. I would not wear this one on its own. I'm only giving it like a two out of five for wearability on its own. Under makeup, I gave this a five out of five because the makeup just looked terrific with this underneath it all day. Next up is the Skin 1004 Madagascar Centella Air Fit Sun Cream Light SPF 30 PA++++ $17 for 1.69 ounces, so only $10 an ounce. It has zinc oxide, it's fragrance-free, non-nano, reef safe, not water resistant, and has calming ingredients. This is a white lotion textured sunscreen. It feels really lightweight and spreads evenly and easily over the skin. It doesn't feel greasy, but it does leave the slightest like tacky feeling on the skin. The finish is a really nice soft satin matte. It does leave the slightest white cast. There is a little bit of clumping in the hairline and eyebrows, but if you just rub it out, you can get that to disappear. Foundation goes over it really nicely and it looks good. I did have to use extra foundation to cover my neck where the white cast was and on my ears and on my eyelids. It's very primer-like under makeup, so my pores weren't accentuated and there was no settling into wrinkles. At four hours, it looked nice. There was still no settling into wrinkles. It didn't look shiny. It wasn't worn off and it was comfortable to wear. At the eight hour check-in, the makeup was a little worn off on my nose and chin, but about the same as normal for this foundation with my other sunscreens. And there was no settling in wrinkles all day and it didn't get shiny. So I gave it a four out of five as a sunscreen just because it doesn't feel greasy and it's not super shiny. And I gave it a four out of five under makeup. All right, you guys, we have made it up to this year's winner, and it is the Neutrogena Pure Screen Mineral UV Tint SPF 30. It retails for $16.99 for 1.1 ounces, and it comes in four shades. And the reason I'm kind of chuckling at this one is because I reviewed it over the winter, and I really didn't like it. But now that it's more summery out, I like this one a lot better. I found it drying over the winter. So this is a sunscreen that I definitely wouldn't use year round. But anyway, it's 21.6% zinc oxide, 3.2% titanium dioxide. It's fragrance-free and 80 minutes water resistant. So you could wear this one at the beach. It does come in four shades. The shade that you'll see me using it in is the second shade, which is medium. This is a lightweight, runny, tinted liquid sunscreen. It feels like a nice skincare lotion going on. It rubs in and spreads easily and evenly over the skin with no balling, no pilling, no streaking. There are no problems around the hairline or the eyebrows. There's no white cast. There's no smell. The finish is pretty luminous. It does still feel a little bit greasy and a little bit oily on the surface of your skin even after 20 minutes of dry back. Foundation does go over this really really beautifully but the shine does come through the makeup but it does look natural and really really nice. After four hours the makeup still looked really good from a distance. It was a little extra shiny in my t-zone but the wear is very good. It wasn't worn off at all. There was just a little bit of settling into wrinkles. At the eight hour check-in the makeup was very very shiny in my t-zone but not worn off at all on my nose and just a little bit worn off on my chin and forehead. I thought it looked really youthful, really dewy. It was kind of making me the happiest out of all of these other 24 sunscreens that I had worn. So I gave this one a rating of four out of five for being wearable on its own as a sunscreen and four out of five for how it wore under makeup. All right, so 25 more sunscreens down. Not a 100% favorite in there for me. I like to have a clear winner, and unfortunately, after testing all these, there really wasn't a clear knock-it-out-of-the-park winner for me. So I am gonna just show you my holy grails, which I think 
are better than pretty much everything I tested here today. So my current Holy Grail sunscreen, the one that I use just about every single day of my life, is the Undefined R&R Sun Serum. This is an SPF 50 with a PA++++ rating. So this is the one that I'm actually wearing today. This is one that I wear when I test makeup because it's so great under makeup. And this is the one that I wear every day, whether I'm wearing makeup or not because it looks good on my skin it is slightly tinted here in new england this dries back on me it's not super shiny it's not super greasy feeling but that could be different depending on your weather but i love it another one of my favorites that's more like a traditional sunscreen lotion but tinted is the elta md uv elements spf 44. this was my holy grail before i discovered the r and r it's a little thicker going on but it does work great under makeup as well another one that i love is dr g Green Mild Up Sun Plus. This is an SPF 50 plus with a PA++++ plus 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 rating. This one does leave a slight white cast, but it's not greasy and it's not shiny and it works pretty well under makeup. Then another really good one that's tinted is the Australian Gold Botanical SPF 50. This one comes in four different shades, so hopefully you could find a shade match in this one. This one is much thicker, can be a little bit drying on the skin, so I don't recommend this one for people with dry skin, but it's very primer-like and it works great under makeup. Another favorite is Babo Botanicals. This is their Daily Sheer Fluid Tinted Mineral Sunscreen SPF 50. This one is great for people who don't like a greasy feel at all from their sunscreen. If you want to put it on and have it be immediately dry and set feeling and matte, then this is gonna be the sunscreen for you. It is tinted, it only comes in one shade, but it's a little bit paler and a little bit cooler, so I actually can't wear this one on its own. I have to put a little makeup on over it, so if you're paler than me, then you could give this one a try. And those are my favorite sunscreens and the sunscreens that I tested this year. And I'm always kind of bummed when I do this much testing and there isn't a big winner because, I mean, literally, I've been testing sunscreens for three months straight, and then with the <laughs> hard drive failure and snafu where I had to retest them all. I was like, oh boy, <sighs> oh, this is quite some video. So there you have it. Another year of sunscreen testing in the books. I hope that today's video helped you to find your perfect sunscreen, one that you will love to put on every single day, no matter what and that you can use a whole quarter teaspoon of and it will feel great on your face. So if you enjoyed the video and found it helpful and informative, go ahead and give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. As always, I thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you watching. I hope you have a great day and I will see you in the next video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.